Have you ever wondered why the small East African country of Burundi is often in the news for ethnic tensions? This is Burundi, a landlocked nation nestled between Rwanda, Tanzania, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The country's rich tapestry of languages includes Kurundi, French, and English. The ethnic makeup of Burundi is complex, with the TWA, Hutu, and Tutsi groups each playing a role in its intricate social fabric. The history of Burundi is equally complex. For over 200 years it was an independent kingdom, only to be swept up into the folds of German East Africa in the late 19th century. After the turmoil of the First World War, Burundi found itself under Belgian mandate, known then as Rwanda-Urundi. This intricate past has left a lasting impact on the nation, with ripples of its history still evident in the present day. Ethnic tensions, political instability, and a struggle for reconciliation are part of Burundi's ongoing narrative. Let's delve deeper into the complex roots of Burundi's internal struggles. To understand the present, we must journey back to the past. Let's delve into the early history of Burundi, a landlocked country in East Africa with a rich and complex tapestry of cultures and ethnicities. The ancient kingdom of Burundi was a realm of harmony and hierarchy, where the TWA, Hutu, and Tutsi ethnic groups coexisted. The TWA, the earliest inhabitants, were hunter-gatherers. The Hutu, who arrived later, became the farmers, while the Tutsi, the last to arrive, were cattle herders. This division of labor was not just economic, but it evolved into a distinct social structure. In this hierarchical system, the Tutsi, despite being a minority, held the upper hand. They were the rulers, the monarchs, the aristocrats. The Hutu majority, on the other hand, were the commoners, the peasantry. The TWA, the smallest group, were marginalized, often overlooked in the power dynamics between the Hutu and Tutsi. However, this system, based on mutual interdependence, was drastically altered during the colonial period. When German East Africa occupied Burundi during World War I, and later when it became a Belgian mandate territory, the colonial powers chose to rule through the Tutsi aristocracy, exacerbating the existing social divisions. The Belgians introduced identity cards, formalizing ethnic divisions that had previously been fluid. The policy of indirect rule amplified the power imbalance, sowing the seeds of ethnic tension. The Hutu felt marginalized, their resentment simmered, and a sense of ethnic consciousness began to take root. The Tutsi, on the other hand, were placed in a precarious position. While they enjoyed the privileges of power, they were also acutely aware that their status was tied to the whims of the colonial masters. When Burundi gained independence in 1962, these tensions didn't disappear. Instead, they escalated. The year 1972 marked a dark chapter in Burundi's history. As Burundi sought to find its footing in the world after gaining independence in 1962, it faced a horrific setback. The brutal genocide of Hutus unfolded in 1972, an event that would forever mar the nation's history. This was not a random act of violence. It was a systematic and calculated act of ethnic cleansing, driven by political motives and ethnic tensions that had been simmering beneath the surface for years. In the wake of the genocide, the nation was caught in a vicious cycle of political instability. The reins of power were seized by a series of Tutsi dictators. Each ruler seemed more ruthless than the last, and the people of Burundi found themselves trapped under oppressive regimes. The dictators ruled with an iron fist, and human rights violations became the order of the day. This was a time when the people's voices were silenced, their rights trampled upon, and their spirits broken. While the political landscape was dominated by violence and oppression, the economic situation was no better. Burundi, a primarily rural country, was plagued by widespread poverty. The majority of the population was engaged in subsistence farming, barely scraping by. The high population density only exacerbated the issue, as resources were stretched thin and opportunities were scarce. The aftermath of the genocide and the subsequent political instability left deep scars on the nation. The people of Burundi were left to grapple with the traumatic memories of the past, while living under the constant threat of violence and poverty. The once vibrant and diverse society was now divided along ethnic lines, and the dream of a peaceful and prosperous Burundi seemed more distant than ever. The scars of the past still haunt Burundi, making reconciliation a challenging task. Fast forward to today, and Burundi's struggle for peace continues. The landlocked East African nation, primarily rural and densely populated, remains embroiled in a complex web of ethnic tensions and political instability. 
The shadows of past conflicts between the Hutu and Tutsi ethnic groups still loom large, and human rights remain a significant concern. Despite the challenges, efforts towards reconciliation and peacebuilding persist. The government, international organizations, and local communities are all part of this vital process. But the path isn't easy. The legacy of past atrocities coupled with ongoing tensions complicates the journey towards healing and unity. Political instability remains a significant issue. A series of Tutsi dictators has ruled Burundi, contributing to the ethnic divide and perpetuating a cycle of mistrust. The road to a truly representative and inclusive political system is steep, but necessary for lasting peace. Human rights concerns are equally pressing. Burundi has struggled with a poor human rights record, including instances of violence, repression, and injustice. Addressing these issues is critical to fostering a society where all citizens can live in dignity, free from fear and want. Yet, amid the turmoil, there are glimmers of hope. Efforts towards reconciliation are underway, with a focus on dialogue, justice, and communal healing. Community-based initiatives are particularly promising, fostering grassroots reconciliation through dialogue and shared experiences. The international community also plays a crucial role, supporting local efforts, advocating for human rights, and providing much-needed aid. Organizations like the United Nations and the African Union are actively involved, promoting peace and supporting development. But the journey is far from over. The road to reconciliation is long and fraught with challenges. The wounds of past conflicts run deep, and the divisions they've caused won't disappear overnight. But despite the challenges, hope persists. The people of Burundi, resilient and determined, continue their quest for a peaceful and inclusive future. Burundi's journey towards reconciliation is a long and arduous one, but hope persists. So, what lies ahead for Burundi? As we look to the future, it's clear that lasting peace in Burundi will not be achieved without first understanding and addressing the root causes of the conflict. The complex web of ethnic tensions, political instability, and economic hardship that has plagued Burundi means that there are no easy answers. However, there are potential solutions that could pave the way to reconciliation and stability. One of the keys to this puzzle is education. By teaching the next generation about the history of the Hutu-Tutsi conflict, the hope is that they will be able to break the cycle of violence and fear. Education can also provide the tools needed to combat poverty and inequality, two of the driving forces behind the conflict. Moving forward, the role of international organizations will also be crucial. The United Nations, the African Union, and other global bodies have been instrumental in providing humanitarian aid and facilitating peace talks, but their role can and should go beyond that. These organizations can help to build institutions that support democracy and human rights, fostering a political environment where all voices are heard and respected. Another promising avenue is the promotion of sustainable development. By addressing environmental issues like deforestation and habitat loss, Burundi can not only protect its natural resources, but also create jobs and economic opportunities. In a country where the majority of the population is rural and reliant on agriculture, this could be a game changer. Finally, the process of reconciliation must be led by Burundians themselves. This involves acknowledging the atrocities of the past, seeking justice for victims, and fostering dialogue between different ethnic groups. It's a difficult and painful process, but a necessary one if Burundi is to move past its history of violence. Only by acknowledging its past can Burundi hope to build a harmonious and prosperous future. The story of Burundi is a stark reminder of how ethnic tensions can destabilize a nation. We've journeyed through the roots of conflict, the genocide and its aftermath, the current situation, and potential paths forward. The intricate tapestry of Burundi's history has been woven with threads of strife and reconciliation, and it's evident how these ethnic tensions have left indelible marks on the nation's fabric. The importance of knowledge and understanding in these matters cannot be overstated. By comprehending the complexities of such conflicts, we're better equipped to prevent similar situations elsewhere. It's essential to remember that every nation's story is a chapter in the grand narrative of our shared human experience. And each chapter provides invaluable lessons, contributing to our collective wisdom. Thank you for joining us on this journey through Burundi's history. Please subscribe to our channel like this video and share it with others. Knowledge is power and together we can make a difference.